Okay, welcome to our drop-in meditation and community time, practice time, time of intention, and uh, thanks for joining us. So the practice tonight is in honor of, in heart connection uh, with one of our very dear teachers that um, died this week, um, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, known by his students as Tay or Thai, Thai, spelt T-H-A-Y, but pronounced Thai, and um, a remarkable, I would say prolific as well, Dharma teacher, uh, Vietnamese, Buddhist monk, um, and he died in his home in Hue, Vietnam. Uh, he was 95, and he was an amazing activist, peace activist, really. Um, and of course, teacher, um, he really became known in the West when he was exiled from Vietnam because he spoke out about the war and about all wars really and um, asking for an end to war which wasn't um, looked upon with kindness and so he was not able to return to his homeland uh, for a long time and uh, he, he really started what was is called engaged buddhism which is was really this form of social action um, anti-war combined with mindfulness and meditation and the teachings of dharma and established i don't know how many dozens of monasteries around the world um, i think the biggest one was in france uh, and so sharing some the, the, there's so many I, i'm sure many of us or most of us have been touched by his teachings in some way and maybe ways that you're not even aware of that have come from there um and so this is just a, a small excerpt from one of his books called zen and the art of saving the planet again there's that social action with dharma <clears throat> and uh His teachings were so accessible and so, um, and still are. But one of the threads that stands out for me from the pieces I've read it, it is um, a lot about coming home and kind of what I would call radical acceptance of really turning towards and embracing with such compassion how it is, however it is within this heart, body, mind. And uh, well, I won't try to paraphrase the words of a master. So I'm just going to read this piece and then we're going to uh, practice with this. Uh, he says, um, a yogi, or this is a, a name for a practitioner, a meditation student, practitioner, is an artist who knows how to handle their fear and other kinds of painful feeling or emotion. I love that as an art, an artist. They do not feel they are a victim because they know there's something they can do. So we don't feel like we're at the mercy of our emotions and mind states that are constantly feel like, you know, we're, they kind of have their way with us sometimes or take over. And uh, so he's describing this as an art that we can um, really learn. There's something, lots of powerful things we can do with these states when they arise. He tells us, you listen to the suffering in you and you get in touch with it. Breathe in and out deeply to see, why am I suffering? 
Where has it come from? I love the breadth of this vision. He says, your suffering, your fear may reflect the suffering of your parents, your ancestors, and the planet. It also contains the suffering of your time, your community, your society, your nation. It's so true. To, I mean, just listing that, you can feel the what is so so prevalent right now. And throughout time, we tend to think, oh, it's like this now. But really, it's been like this even thousands of years ago. Um, maybe we have a different awareness, a different connectivity to this global scale of suffering, um, a wider awareness of, of it, that, that's likely true. But to see this ancestral connection, the suffering from our parents, which we, we now know is even has a genetic influence, um, the planet, the globe, our community, it's, um, and so he goes on to say, it's very important not to cover it up with music, movies, or computer games. <laughs> we could add to that list, right? There are all the ways that we try to manage, try to fix, try to get rid of, try to control, try to suppress, to block out all of these challenging states. To have the courage to go home to yourself. He uses this teaching a lot about coming home to yourself. To recognize and hold the suffering inside and look deeply into it may be the most important thing for you to do as a meditator. <laughs> Many of us maybe don't really want to hear that. We may come to practice to meditation to get rid of, to fix, to escape. I just want peace. I just want calm. I want to clear my mind. I hear that one a lot. And um, he's saying to hold the suffering inside and look deeply into it. <laughs> and that might not be like our first inclination with, with suffering. So let's hear more. Love this part is uh, the part that really stood out for me. The meditator breathes in and says, hello, my fear. Hello, my anger. Hello, my despair. I will take good care of you. Wow. That is so touching. <clears throat> The moment you recognize the feeling and smile to it with love and care, embracing the fear with mindfulness, it will begin to change. So saying hello and recognizing. So this means naming for ourselves. What, what is this? What is this that's showing up? When I see myself reaching for the habit distractions, stop and check, oh, is there something else going on here? Is there loneliness? Is there fear? Is there overwhelm? And then see if we can take the teachings of this master to heart and say, hello, what's here? And say, I will take good care of you to these heart and mind states, not I will vanquish you, I will destroy you, I will eradicate you from my heart and mind. Can you imagine, I will take good care of you. That's, that's, wow. So the moment you recognize the feeling and smile to it with love and care, embracing the fear with mindfulness, it will begin to change. So to turn, recognize, turn towards it with this tenderness, I will take care of you. This is the path to it 
being transformed to not being some some problem that we're pushing away and fixing but we're um, attending to it he says that is the miracle of mindfulness beautiful image here it's like the morning sunlight shining on a lotus flower the bud is not opened yet but as the sunlight pours down the photons penetrate into the bud and after one or two hours of being penetrated by the light the flower opens itself this is what he's suggesting we do not suggesting he's guiding us with these painful states of heart and mind to bring this bright light of mindful compassionate attention to what's showing up and in this way it opens by itself meaning it releases its contraction it starts to um, dissipation happens in the spaciousness of opening and awareness uh, lastly he says we have the energy of mindfulness that's generated by mindful walking sitting and breathing and he he teaches a lot about continuity of awareness continuity of mindfulness not just when we sit down and are quiet close our eyes and whatever focus on a, an object but when walking, when eating, when speaking, when drinking tea, when holding a cup, is it continual, constant um, mindfulness. So this generates an energy. With that energy, we embrace our fear gently, as gently as the light embraces the flower. Right? The, the light doesn't like pry the petals open. It's just gentle, bright, attentive, warm. And when these two kinds of energy encounter each other, the energy of whatever that painful state is and the energy of mindfulness, there will be a change, a transformation. The energy of tenderness penetrates the fear, anger, or despair. You hold it as dearly as you might hold a wounded child. The energy of tenderness. Wow. Uh, the, these words are all from uh, his book, Zen and the Art of Saving the Planet. Um, it was written in 2021 by Harper One, is the publisher. And um, this is a profound teaching and, and so tender. You can just feel his compassion and tenderness in this, this teaching. Uh, and this, uh, it, it evokes in me a sense of sada, faith which means trust, to trust in the example of this dear one's life and the way they moved through the world with such presence and compassion and um, engaged activism, engaged Buddhism, engaged Buddhism uh, that when I don't have the, the, these resources, I trust and rely and have faith in these type of teachings. And um, so thank you so much, Tay, for your life and wisdom and tenderness as you continue to hold us in these times of fear and despair and overwhelm. Mm. So let's have a practice now with these wise and dear words. Please adjust your posture for what 
feels tender <laughs> and kind you hold we hold our posture um as dearly as we might hold a wounded child as he says here you know so maybe you need to lay down or dim your lighting or get a blanket i have a nice soft blanket on me tonight <clears throat> so just uh, take some time here to get what you need you might like to turn away from the screen if you're uh, watching on a device, which I think we all are. So our posture is already beginning with um, some care and also some brightness, like the beautiful lotus flower. It has an uprightness through the stem as the crown of the head or the bud reaches towards the sunlight so we can feel some brightness in our posture as well as some ease and support and comfort And as we come into stillness, we take some time here just to soften the body. Any tension that is standing out that isn't needed right now, see if we can notice that. Recognize it, smile to it. And in the attention, just meeting with physical tension, we might feel it, it opens a little bit. And as we begin to settle into this stillness, we may begin to feel the sensations of rootedness, the roots of that lotus flower. And as Thich Nhat Hanh often reminded us and taught, the invitation here is to come home to yourself. So 
And this takes courage and energy and intention. Well, it's important to invite ease into our body as much as is possible. We also want to cultivate alertness. In another writing, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, gives the example of someone driving a car, that we need to be no less awake than the driver of a car. Or somebody walking on stilts. He also said, be like a lion going forward with slow, gentle, and firm steps. And so see what will support that bright energy and awareness for you tonight. What is it helpful for you to have um, an anchor like your breath? Or some might choose to just keep a wider attention on the whole felt experience of the body sitting. So in these next few minutes of silence, let's just establish our alertness behind the wheel on the top of the stilts with whichever anchor you're choosing, the whole body sitting or the breath as it arises and passes. Feeling all the scattered energy from your day coming home.
And then as we begin arriving home with ourselves, we may, there may arise some, something that's asking for care and attention. state of heart, a state of mind, a state of body. And the practice is to recognize Hello, my fear, my anger, my despair. See what's here for you. If there is, there may not be tonight. My confusion, my overwhelm. Recognize the feeling and smile to it with love and care. I will take good care of you. If it feels supportive, you might find it helpful to place a hand on your heart or belly or open your eyes if you feel overwhelmed. We want to do this really gently with this energy of tenderness this light, the sunlight that penetrates and opens And you might notice some release or some easing of some movement or change within that experience. And you could return to the anchor of the breath or the body coming home and resting with that again.
Take that on. Also, often taught about death and interconnectedness, and that we are all in all things. And he said that he can already see himself in you in other people and in future generations. So you might allow yourself to receive that blessing, that presence, that his love and compassion and wisdom is here with you, is you. Imagining that presence like that sunlight pouring down, very tender, allowing yourself, allowing ourselves to be opened. And even if a milder heart or mind state is arising for you, can you just recognize that and smile to it, embracing it with mindfulness? Ah, oh, boredom is here, restlessness, wanting something else, doubting. The miracle is in the mindfulness.
If you notice you've abandoned yourself or the present moment without any harshness, just gently come home again. And in a moment, I'll ring the bowl three times. Gently transitioning from your practice and if you've uh, joined us on the YouTube recording, I'll uh, put the links to the book uh, that that teaching came from. Also, I was um, mentioning earlier about um, one of the themes that he often shared around the continuity of practice, of mindfulness. And um, this is from uh, The Miracle of Mindfulness, a manual on meditation. And uh, he says it this way, in my small class in meditation for non-Vietnamese, there are many young people. I've told them that if each one can meditate an hour each day, that's good, but it's nowhere near enough. You've got to practice meditation when you walk, stand, lie down, sit, and work while washing your hands washing the dishes, sweeping the floor, drinking tea, talking to friends, or whatever you're doing. While washing the dishes, you might be thinking about the tea afterwards, and so try to get them out of the way as quickly as possible in order to sit and drink tea. But that means that you are, you are incapable of living during the time you are washing the dishes. When you are washing the dishes, washing the dishes must be the most important thing in your life. When you are using the toilet, let that be the most important thing in your life. And so on. Chopping wood is meditation. Carrying water is meditation. Be mindful 24 hours a day, not just during the one hour you may allot for formal meditation or reading scripture and reciting prayers. 
Each act must be carried out in mindfulness. Each act is a rite, a ceremony. Raising your cup of tea to your mouth is a rite. R-I-T-E, right. Does the word right seem too solemn? He asks. I use that word in order to jolt you into the realization of the life and death matter of awareness. Well, there's nothing else I need to add to that, certainly. So um, we'll just uh, sign off from the recording for now and for folks in this uh, zoom chat um, you're welcome to stay if you like